Hello and welcome to Tradeflow Television. Bringing you valuable analysis and actionable intelligence. Through the global commodity markets. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. Russia failed to raise oil output in February despite being granted permission by OPEC Plus as industry sources said challenges in resuming output from mature fields were exacerbated by harsh winter weather. Until 2017, Russia had never before cut production in tandem with OPEC producers. Last year it was forced to slash output by almost a fifth or two million barrels per day BPD, amid a global demand collapse caused by the pandemic. Resuming production quickly turned out to be more difficult than anticipated as old wells, mostly in Siberia, struggled to add new barrels. Winter cold was only partially to blame for the problems, four industry sources said. Crop insurance policies that guarantee prices for the 2021 growing season are the highest in seven years for corn and the highest in eight years for soybeans, bolstering expectations for record combined acreage of both crops, analysts said. The U.S. Department of Agriculture, USDA, sets the guarantees, which act as the floor price below which farmers with insurance receive payments, at $4.58 per bushel for corn and $11.87 a bushel for soybeans across most of the U.S. crop belt. The prices reflect the average settlement for Chicago Board of Trade December corn futures and November soybean futures during the month of February. Prices have jumped from a year ago due to robust export demand that is expected to tighten year-end supplies of the two most widely planted U.S. crops. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. India's fuel consumption could rise by 9.8% in the year to March 2022, its highest pace of growth in six years, driven by robust demand for gasoline and gas oil in Asia's third-largest economy, according to initial government projections. Higher expectation of fuel consumption, a proxy for oil demand, points to a sharp recovery in industrial activity in the economy hit hard by the pandemic. India could consume 215.24 million tonnes of refined fuels in the financial year 2021-22 compared to the revised estimate of 195.94 million tonnes consumed in 2020-21, data posted on the website of Petroleum Planning Analysis Cell, PPAC, showed. Top oil exporter Saudi Arabia is expected to raise its official selling prices OSPs, for light crude grades for Asia in April, tracking stronger Middle East benchmarks and refining margins, a Reuters survey showed on Tuesday. Sources at five Asian refiners expect the April OSP for flagship Arab light crude to increase by an average of 16 cents a barrel, which would take it to the highest level since August last year. Their forecasts ranged from increases of 5 cents to 30 cents, in line with gains in benchmarks Oman and Cash Dubai's premiums to Dubai swaps. Saudi Arabia voluntarily cut an extra 1 million barrel per day of production in February and March under a deal among the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries and their allies to support prices. Next, we have the top news in metal markets. Use of zinc in the rechargeable battery sector is set to grow exponentially this decade with the build-out of energy storage to ensure electricity supply, the head of the International Zinc Association IZA, said on Tuesday. Annual demand for zinc in batteries was only 600 tons in 2020 but that figure is projected to rise to 77,500 tons in 2030, according to a presentation by IZA Executive Director Andrew Green at the start of the association's annual zinc conference, which is being held online. Zinc, mainly used to galvanize steel, has not received the same level of attention from the burgeoning battery sector as other metals such as nickel, cobalt and lithium, which are favored in electric vehicle batteries. Copper steadied above $9,000 a ton on Tuesday, easing fears that prices could correct lower after a breakneck rally powered by expectations of tight supply and growing demand. Benchmark copper on the London Metal Exchange, LME, was up 1.3% at $9,163.50 a tonne in official trading, moving towards last week's 10-year high of $9,617. The metal used in power and construction shot up 15.5% in February as more analysts predicted price rises and speculators piled in. We will now look at the top news in the agricultural sector. 
Ukraine has used 78.3% of its 17.5 million tons wheat exports quota for the 2020-21 season, the economy ministry data showed on Tuesday. Ukrainian wheat exports totaled 13.7 million tons as of Mark 1, down almost 2.86 million ton from the same data season ago, the data showed. The volume included 700,000 tons of wheat exported in February. The ministry has said it expects that wheat exports will reach 950,000 tons in March. That is all for today's news on the commodity market. Stay tuned to Trade Flow TV as we continue to provide you with more updates. You can also follow us on Twitter at TradeflowTV1 which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop.